Hey guys, so my name's Caleb, um, and I want to talk with you guys about um, grace today. Grace as it applies specifically to the unity of uh, the community that we live in. So I love psychology. It's a personal passion of mine, um, and I came across a psychological study that I thought was really fascinating a couple months ago. And the premise is that people are more likely to forgive someone who they perceive as being weaker than themselves. I thought that was, that was an interesting, fascinating idea, so I wanted to test that myself. So I created a poll, I created a survey for, for my class and for social media, and I posted it. And what I did was I put two side-by-side -side pictures of, of men. One picture would have attributes that are traditionally more strong-looking, so good posture, well-dressed. Um, and the second picture would have qualities that were more weak-looking, so slouched posture, you know, uh, really lazy-looking face. And I, I put it out there. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and when, when the results came back in, it proved the point because the majority of people overwhelmingly voted that they would rather forgive the person who they perceived as weaker. And I was really ha happy and excited because I proved my own point, uh, and I'm patting myself on the back for that. But then I, I, I started thinking, okay, so what does this tell us about humanity? What does this tell us about people? And ultimately what I took out of that is that it shows us that we naturally do not fully understand how to apply grace. That there is a disconnect there. That if we discriminate our grace based on such small things as body posture, how could we ever fully expect to, to give that to people truly and fairly? And I, I kept thinking about this, and I realized that there, there's a true good model for what grace is, for what grace looks like, and that's right in front of our face. It's Jesus. And I thought about it, and I split it up into to three steps that I think Jesus' sacrifice specifically shows this grace process. And the first is recognizing the damage. You have to understand where you've been wounded, exactly what, what got you. See, Jesus understood this perfectly. He understood the, the wounds of the world. He understood that the sin, the damage, uh, the brokenness, and all of this, he understood that it was something that required redemption and it required healing. And similarly, we have to understand where we need redemption or else we're never going to get to that healing part. The second part, I believe, is the most missed part about grace, and that's this. When you're showing grace, you have to sacrifice a part of yourself for the other person. That could be your, your pride, your bitterness, your anger, you being right. Whatever it is, you have to relinquish that. See, our faith would be entirely different if Jesus was up on the cross and then looked out over the world and said, I forgive all of you. And then he hopped off the cross, got some wine with the Pharisees, went along his way, and had a good time. That didn't happen. That didn't happen for a reason. Because of one word. Atonement. The wounds of the world require atonement. And Jesus took that upon himself. He, he gave his life, and that was his atonement. When we are showing grace, we have to give our own atonement for the wound. And I think what, what justice often does is justice says that the person who has hurt you must do the atoning. They must get hurt. They must become equal with you. What grace does is says, I am going to take that atonement on myself. And that's what makes grace so potent. It produces healing. And healing is the third part of that. If you go through all the, the forgiveness, the talking, um, all of that, and you don't have that healing in the heart at the end of it, it's not worth anything. See, Jesus had his resurrection. He had his redemption. We need our resurrection. We need our redemption through grace. And I think a big, big common misconception is that somehow the pursuit of justice, that thing that we hold so high, up here, that that is going to somehow bring us peace, that it's going to bring us healing, that by getting even with someone, by, by hurting them back, by just making that ground level, we are going to be healed. And I'm going to make a bold claim to you guys that no one who has ever existed, whoever will exist, has ever been fully healed by justice. No one. See, what justice does is it fixes this outward situation, makes this fair. And that, that's, that has its own virtue, but it doesn't even come close to dealing with the heart. 
doesn't even come close. Only God can do that. Only grace can do that. And so while we hold virtue as, uh, justice as a high virtue, we understand that relationally in our community, we need to hold grace as an equal virtue, that we need to understand how to apply that, how to give that. Another misconception, I think, is that when you're showing grace, the person who is really benefiting the most is the person receiving the grace, right? We'd expect that. I think it's actually the opposite. The person who benefits most from grace is the person giving it. And that's for one reason. When you sacrifice a part of yourself, you humble yourself in grace, you are relieved of bitterness. That disappears from your heart. And that is something that's not done by you, it's done by God. It's given to you. It's a divine feeling, and it is, it is so powerful in that. And so despite the fact that whatever psychological study says that we don't understand grace, we don't, we don't get grace, we do have a model for it in Jesus. Jesus. We can learn from that. And we do have a source of healing, and we do have a source of thriving that can heal those wounds in God. Thank you.